everyone, I'm Quinn and welcome to Away in Rome. Today I want to share a little bit about my first experience abroad as a digital nomad. I was a few months into a fully 100% remote job. I was desperate to go somewhere, anywhere, and on a whim I decided to head down to Antigua, Guatemala. In this video I'll be sharing a few key things that you'll need to know to have a smooth time if you choose to work down in Antigua. Overall, I love this destination. I think it's perfect for solo travel and also a great digital nomad base. First of all, I'll tell you about my travel down there. For me, it was very quick and smooth. I went from Washington DC to Houston down to Guatemala. The whole travel day was about eight hours and that includes an hour and a half layover. I'd say it's as simple as getting to the Midwest or getting to the West Coast. It was not too complicated at all for an international trip. Once I touched down in Guatemala City, the next step was to get from there to Antigua. That's a trip that can take anywhere from 45 minutes to three and a half hours, depending on what's going on at any given time. To make my life a little bit easier, I booked a shuttle with Guatego, which I'm so thankful that I did. I knew this was a new country for me and I didn't want to have to deal with possibly getting bamboozled or having to haggle with a taxi driver. So the shuttle made sure that I had someone waiting for me at the airport and I had a solid price that I had already paid. In this case, it was about $19 for that trip and I think it was well worth it to let go of some of that stress that I would have had to deal with if I paid once I got to Guatemala. I had a great experience with Guatego and I'd recommend them to anyone who's going to Guatemala. It made my process so much smoother and I actually ended up using them again later in the month. So that's really all I have on the travel tip. Guatemala is a super easy destination to get to from the US and getting to Antigua from Guatemala City is a straight shot. The really great thing about Antigua is that it's a very easy city to get around. You can walk pretty much everywhere you need to go in town and if anything's too far you can always take a readily available Uber or taxi. I think I took maybe eight Ubers over the course of my time there and they were all very cheap. Okay, now let's talk about some specifics. One thing that I made sure to do right when I touched on in Guatemala was pick up some groceries. I want to share with you some good places that I shopped at on a regular basis. One place that I went to a lot was the local market. On top of this just being a practical place to get everything you need at once, it was also a very rich cultural experience. There's a lot of sights, sounds, a lot going on. It is not your typical grocery shopping experience. And it's also not for the faint of heart. In addition to the vegetables and fruits that they have lying out, maybe some spices, there's also some butchered meats hanging in the corner and that comes with some interesting smells as well. So just make sure that you're prepared for that. But overall, I found this to be a great destination to get what I needed and a great way to meet locals. The great thing about shopping here is that the fruits and vegetables are so delicious. Something about the volcanic ash mixing with the soil in Guatemala just makes them all so flavorful. I can't even describe to you the avocados I got from this place. I was obsessed. I also had a few carrots that were maybe half the size of my forearm. They were huge and so sweet. I just, I wish I could taste them again. So definitely don't miss out on going to the local market. Second, I went to this place very, very often, a shop called Organica. This is where you can go for all of your health food items. I spent a lot of money here on snacks and a few staples like coconut oil. And it just reminded me a lot of just a local health food store that I find here in the States with a few traditional Guatemalan items as well. This is a really great place to go if you have any allergies or need any specialty foods. But do keep in mind this will be your most expensive option. And lastly, we have La Borgonia. I don't remember where the accent was on that word, so I maybe didn't say it right, but this is most similar to a supermarket that you'd find here in the States. It had all the condiments, processed foods, snacks that you'll need, plus any out of season vegetables that you might not be able to find at the local market. They also had a space in the back that was more like a convenience store. So it had your Tupperware, your cleaning supplies, things of that sort. So this is definitely your one-stop shop for any convenience items that you're gonna be looking for that you might've forgotten at home or just end up needing during your time in Guatemala. And I'm on tip that actually reminds me that since this was my first time as a digital nomad, I wasn't thinking about needing Tupperware. I knew that I was gonna be cooking every day, but it just didn't cross my mind that I would need containers to put those foods in. So La Bodegonia saved my butt there. So if you're ever in a bind, don't forget that name and pop over there if you just need any last minute items. And don't forget that anything that I mentioned in this video, I'm gonna be linking down below so you can add to your Google Maps or jot down on your notes for your next trip. Okay, so let me hit on one of the most important aspects for a digital nomad considering a specific destination. 
and that is Wi-Fi. The fascinating and sometimes frustrating thing about Antigua is that the entire city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so there are some limitations on where certain infrastructure can be built, and the Wi-Fi isn't the strongest. Most places have Wi-Fi strong enough for you to do basic work, but if you need to stream or maybe have a video call, your options may be a bit more limited. I worked about half my time at the hotel I'm staying at, and half the time at cafes and co-working spaces around town. And from that, I came up with a list of places with reliable Wi-Fi and good atmospheres that you can consider on your trip to Antigua. I'll make sure to put the Wi-Fi speeds of these places somewhere on the screen, maybe here or there, so you can check and I'm not just spouting a bunch of numbers at you. For co-working spots, there were two places in town that I knew of. One is Selena and one is Impact Hub. I never had the chance to go to Selena, but all I heard was good things about it. And for Impact Hub, it's a quiet colonial mansion with an outdoor courtyard and on the roof there's amazing views of the volcanoes and the town. I think it's a great option. I paid $8 for a daily pass and obviously that will decrease if you buy a pack for a week or unlimited. For cafes, I enjoyed Fat Cat and Artisa de Cafe. Fat Cat had a pretty good internet speed, cool baristas, a good vibe, and it was never really too hard to find a seat. Artisa de Cafe was one of the most aesthetically pleasing cafes that I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, it was beautiful. And the Wi-Fi was pretty good too, but the downside there was that I was absolutely never able to find a seat. It was pretty packed and very popular amongst the digital nomad community down there. And I saved the best for last. The absolute best place to go for your Wi-Fi unmatched speed is Port the Hotel. This is a very fancy hotel in town and I don't know if they became a little bit lax after 2020 but they are very generous with just letting people use their space. You can walk in there, they don't question you, you can find a seat, get comfortable, use their outlets, use their very very fast Wi-Fi and just make yourself at home. As long as you buy a drink or a meal sometime during your day, they will not bother you. I had some days where I stayed there eight or nine hours and they were so kind to me and just kind of left me to do my work. I do have to warn you though, it is still a hotel. It is not a co-working space. So there will be times where they're playing music, having parties, and you kind of just have to deal with it. So if you're not comfortable having maybe a mariachi band playing in the background, find somewhere else to work. This happened to me on a call. Luckily it was internal, but it was so embarrassing. I was explaining something I had learned from a client call to my boss and a loud mariachi band started playing for the next 30 minutes. It was mortifying. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. Porto Hotel, amazing Wi-Fi, but occasionally there's gonna be some parties happening in the background. A great resource to use to check the speed at these different locations is speedtest.com. I found this website out from another digital nomad that I met when I was down there. It was really helpful for me to figure out where I was going to settle down for the day. I think I found that the minimum speed I needed was nine megabytes per second whatever that is, um, 9 Mbps. That was the minimum that I needed to have a good client call and be able to work without any lag. And now I just wanna to touch on safety really quickly because that is an important factor for wherever you choose to do your work or to vacation. I found Antigua to be extremely safe, but I'm also a very cautious person. I try not to walk around with my head down or on my phone. I try not to look unsure of my surroundings. And in my whole stay there, I never walked down any secluded streets in the dark alone. If I had to be out late at night, I would take a taxi back home or walk with a big group of people. I have one friend down there who had a guy attempt to mug her when she was walking home alone one night. So I would just remind you to keep your guard up, make sure that you're staying aware, but I don't think that Antigua was any more or less safe than a typical American city. I felt pretty secure when I was there and I just took all the regular precautions. Antigua has a very small town feel and tourism is a huge part of their economy. So they really do appreciate any tourists that come to visit. Because of this, they want to keep a good reputation so that tourists can continue to visit and experience this beautiful country of theirs. Now I'm going to share some smaller logistical details that you should consider if you're staying in Antigua for a longer period of time. First of all, let's talk about your phone plan. Whenever I'm traveling somewhere for more than one or two weeks, I usually switch out the SIM card in my phone and replace it with a local SIM card. This is a very convenient and affordable option and really gives you peace of mind knowing that you can call or text whenever you need to in the country and also have a data plan to access the internet wherever you are. In Guatemala, Tigo and Claro are the most reliable service providers, so I would definitely recommend getting your SIM card from one of them if you choose to go that route. Just remember when you go to their store, you need to have your passport with you as a valid form of identification. With eight gigabytes for Tigo and seven gigabytes for Claro, 
Both providers will run you about $12 for four weeks of data. They have other amounts that cost more or less depending on what you're looking for, but this is just to give you a basic idea of what you might be spending. And the nice thing too is that if you're ever running low, you can always top up your SIM card at supermarkets or corner stores around town. So on the topic of money, I recommend that you don't exchange your dollars for Kitsales at a conversion station at the airport or back in the States. The best thing from my experience that you can do is just go to a local ATM and withdraw Kitsales that way. I felt comfortable using the yellow 5B ATMs around Antigua and before I even left the airport, I took out a big chunk of Kitsales from the first one I saw outside of immigration. This was not an exchange point, it was just an ATM, but it was safe and reliable and it allowed me to have some money if anything were to happen between going from the airport to my hotel. Lastly, I'll share some of my pros and cons about choosing Antigua as your next digital nomad destination. I really don't have too many cons, but I thought really hard to come up with these Three. First of all, there is a lot of poverty in Antigua and if you're not used to seeing people in those types of situations, it might make you uncomfortable or be a little bit jarring to you. There will be beggars in the street and possibly people maybe following you around trying to get you to buy little trinkets that they're selling just so they can make a living and have some money for them and their family. So just keep that in mind. It wasn't too much of a bother for me because I grew up in New York and I'm used to seeing that kind of thing. I've also been to a lot of countries that are on in the developing world but if you're not used to that it can be a surprising part of life in Antigua. Secondly I found that there was a lot of volcanic ash swirling around in the air and sometimes were worse than others. It really didn't impact my breathing at all but it did make me always feel dirty. I really liked to work outside while I was working there. My hotel had a beautiful roof with a great view of the volcano but by the end of the day my computer would be covered in dust my keyboard would just be disgusting. I was constantly having wipes around to like wipe down all my material and my backpack and my hands and my feet. Just keep in mind that that volcanic ash can have you feeling a little grimy by the time you're ready to take your shower after your work day. So that's just a little annoyance, but I thought I'd mention it just so you are aware. And lastly, I found that the restaurant food was not as cheap as I expected it to be. I wasn't going to any fancy restaurants or anything, but I found the prices to be comparable to what you'd find in the US. This wasn't a big deal for me because I was mainly cooking at home and eating those meals throughout the week, but just a little surprise that I was not expecting. And now for my pros. I mentioned before in the video that I would recommend Antigua to anyone, so I'm gonna give you some specific reasons as to why I think it is such a great destination if you're going to be working abroad. First of all, the time zone is pretty in line with the US. Depending on what region you're in, you're either gonna be right in line with your home office or like one to three hours off, which is a pretty good setup. Next, if you wanna try your hand at learning Spanish, Guatemala is the perfect place to practice, especially if you'll be there for more than a couple days. Now, I speak Spanish at an intermediate level and I've been speaking it for a few years and I found the Spanish in Guatemala to be some of the clearest, most easy to understand Spanish that I've ever encountered. There are a lot of language schools in Antigua that you may consider enrolling in and due to the absence of a thick accent, it might make you a little bit more comfortable when you choose to engage in conversation with someone and really practice what you've been learning. I would be remiss if I didn't mention how friendly the locals are here. I encountered so many wonderful, kind people, especially taxi drivers, that went out of their way to make sure that I was comfortable, that I was safe, and that I really was having a good time in their country. I know for a fact that when I return to Antigua, I'll have friends to go back to, and that is truly the most heartwarming thing. I will note here that knowing Spanish made a major difference in my interactions because I was able to engage with people in their first language, but overall, they're just an amiable, friendly bunch that will have you feeling very, very loved while you're in Guatemala. And next, I just wanna say that Antigua is the perfect size. After a few days, you'll find that it is very easy to get around, very difficult to get lost, and just a fun place to explore. But just because it's on the smaller side doesn't mean that there's not a lot to be discovered. There's so many little hidden gems behind the walls there, and even in my last days in Guatemala, I was still finding new places that I wanted to check out, and places that I didn't even have time to see while I was there for a month. So there's always something new to check out. And I'm gonna cut myself off here because I could go on and on, but lastly I'll say that the views are phenomenal. At almost any turn you take, you'll be seeing some magnificent volcanoes and the climate there has produced just some of the most incredible, colorful plant life. I mean, look at this. This was my view most of the days I was working. 
it's unbeatable. The town also has some colorful buildings left over from colonial days that are so fun to see and probably very different than what you're used to. So that is all the technical information that I have for you on day-to-day -day life as a digital nomad in Guatemala. There's not too much to adjust to, so this just allows you to dive right into the country, have fun, and experience all that it has to offer. If you'd like, I'll follow up in a few weeks with some more fun things to do in Guatemala like shopping, activities, destinations, things of that sort. So stay tuned and we'll talk about some more specifics on how to have a good time while you're in Antigua. I hope this is helpful for you and I would love to hear where your first digital nomad destination was. And if you haven't been abroad as a digital nomad, I would love to hear what you want your first destination to be. So that's all from me about living life as a digital nomad in Guatemala. It is a wonderful destination. I cannot rave about it enough and I definitely think it's underrated. Thanks for tuning in guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye.